Today we will discuss about the loading effect. Loading effect is a very important concept in the electronics. Okay. Generally, we saw the loading effect in two scenarios. First, when we try to measure a voltage or the current, at that time we saw this kind of effect. Okay. So for the measurement, measurement of voltage or current. Okay. And another is the in the amplifier. I will show you the problem in each topics. Okay. So what is the definition of loading effect? The loading effect means whenever you connect a load in a particular circuit, at that time the circuit parameters like voltage or current will change. Like suppose you have a black box. Okay. You have a voltage source. Practical voltage source. Okay. And you have a positive terminal and negative terminal. Okay. And you put the load here. Okay. When you connect the load at that time, what will happen? The voltage or current, this kind of parameter will change. That's why you call it a loading effect. Right. That means the voltage or current of the circuit is affected by the loading of the load resistance. Okay, that's how you call it a loading effect. So, first I will show you the second one in the amplifier. So, like whenever you make a voltage source or current source or anything, at that time, you what you want to do? You want to make a voltage source and you want to use that one for some experiment, right? So, we know that any linear bilateral network, we can convert it into a voltage source with a series resistance, right? As per the Thebris theorem, that means we can simply convert this circuit with the VTH and RTH, right? And there will be load resistance, right? When you buy the voltage source, the company told you this is a 10 volt voltage source, okay? So you just bought that one and you connect the load resistance of RL. What you expect? You expect that the current I should be 10 by RL and the voltage VL should be 10 volt, right? But this is not the case. Why? The internal resistance of that particular voltage source is not zero. We know that ideally, in ideal condition, the voltage source resistance RVS should be equal to zero. But for the practical case, when you make the particular voltage source, you know that you can convert this one in the Thebin equivalent circuit. So there will be some Thebin resistance, right? And that is not equal to zero, right? That means the actual voltage you get in load resistance will be VL equal to RL by RL plus RTH into VTH. Okay. Here you can see VTH is how much 10 volt, right? That means you will get a fraction of the 10 volt in the load resistance right now in the circuit rth is around 10 ohm okay and vt is around 10 volt okay and you take this voltage source and try to connect with a load resistance okay so you take this one 10 volt and a voltage source 10 ohm and you connect with the rl right now you can see the current il will be 10 divided by rl plus RTH that means 10 divided by 10 plus RL right now you can see when the load resistance value is much higher at that time loading effect will be normal why this one I write down is the ideal case okay in the ideal case the RTH will be 0 right RTH equal to 0 so effectively this is short right and you connect a load resistance RL. This is 10 volt. That means you will get load current IL equal to 10 divided by RL. 
okay and you will get VL will be 10 divided by RL into RL equal to 10 volt right but for the practical case here RTH is not equal to 0 right and I assume that RTH is 10 ohm a very small resistance and here this is RL now you can see load current IL will be RL divided by 10 volt divided by RL plus 10 ohm we can write down IL ideal is greater than IL actual why this is happening due to the loading effect why as you can see this resistance draws the current from the circuit right that's why we can see the loading effect right the loading effect will be higher when the RL will be lower right suppose in one case RL equal to 10 ohm then IL will be 0 0.5 ampere here you can see IL ideal will be around 1 ampere right so you can see that due to the loading effect we got 0 0.5 ampere 50 percent of the ideal right now another case suppose RL is the 100 K okay at that time you can see that IL actual will be 0 0.999 ampere that is very much close to the 1 ampere right now you can see that loading effect is much lower right so the loading effect is depend on the how much current it takes from the circuit okay when load resistance is much higher loading effect will be lower when RL is much lower loading effect will be much higher okay so this is the case for the amplifier or any voltage source right that's why when you bought a voltage source at that time they told you suppose this is a 10 volt 2 ampere voltage source what does it mean that means that this voltage source will give you maximum of 2 ampere current okay if the current is more than 2 ampere then you cannot get 10 volt then the voltage will drops okay due to the loading effect okay this is the concept at that time there is some voltage regulator what is voltage regulator in the next video i will explain you what is voltage regulator by the zener diode okay where i will show you we can eliminate this type of loading effect by using a zener diode what you need to do just connect a zener diode here then if we change the resistance also the voltage will be constant right your current will not change with the change of the load resistance that's why we need the voltage regulator right so this is the requirement of the voltage regulator okay so this is the second case in the amplifier or the voltage source okay now i go to the measurement of the voltage or current okay this is very much simple suppose you have a circuit where this is a 5 kilo ohm okay resistance and here also you have a 5 kilo ohm resistance okay here we have a 10 volt voltage source okay when you have the 10 volt voltage source at that time what will be the voltage in this particular terminal if i write down a and b we will get v a b equal to 5 divided by 5 plus 5 multiplied by 10 equal to 5 volt right very simple just i apply the voltage depletion rule now you want to measure this voltage like suppose you are doing the practical okay in the lab and you want to measure this particular voltage across this 5 km resistance load resistance so what you will do you will connect a voltmeter right this is a voltmeter and we all know that in the ideal case ideal case resistance of a voltmeter should be infinite right like resistance of ammeter should be zero right when the resistance of voltmeter is infinite that means this voltmeter will not draw any current from the circuit right but this is the ideal case 
right? When this voltmeter will not draw any current from the particular circuit, that means the same current will flow from here and here. All the current will flow from source to the load. Like here is how much? Here will be 1 ampere, will you flow from the source, it will go to the source resistance 5k and load resistance 5k and it will go back to the source, right? As in this case, voltmeter will not draw any current from the circuit due to the ideal voltmeter, right? As the voltmeter resistance is infinite, right? So, we will get here how much? 5 volt, no issue. As here you can see 1 ampere multiplied by 5k, the voltmeter will read 5 volt. But suppose you have a circuit 5k, here also 5k, okay, and here we have the voltage source 10 volt. Here we connect a voltmeter whose internal resistance is not infinite. Suppose this resistance of the voltmeter Rvn is around 5k, okay, that means here actually we have a resistance of 5 kilo ohm, right? That means the total equivalent resistance will be this 5k and this 5k will be in the parallel. That means we will get 7.5k, okay? If the resistance is 7.5k, then we will get the current I will be 10 divided by 7.5k, right? And this current will divide it from here and here, right? This is 5k, this is 5k. So that means the current will equally divide it, right? That means we will get I will be 10 by 15 ampere. Okay. So what will be the voltage around 5k? It will be 10 by 15 multiplied by 5 will be 3.33 volt. So you can see here as the voltmeter resistance is 5 kilo ohm, due to that one, voltmeter draws some current from the circuit, right? That's why due to that one, we can see that the reading of the voltmeter will be 3.33 volt, right? But when we assume that the voltmeter is the ideal voltmeter with the infinite internal resistance, we got how much? It's the 5 volt. So this is the loading effect for the measurement, okay? Here, voltmeter should be a measurement device. It should not be act as a load. As the voltmeter resistance is low, that's why this will act as a load and it will draw some current from the circuit, right? This is the loading effect. So, I think you already understand what is loading effect, right? Loading effect means whenever we connect something on the circuit, if that particular thing draws some current from the circuit, that means that particular thing act as a load, right? We will got a loading effect, okay? So this is the concept of loading effect for the measurement devices, okay? Now, what will be the solution? First solution is the, whenever you buy a voltmeter, at that time, you should check that particular voltmeter internal resistance. That internal resistance should be greater than 10 mega ohm, okay? If that one is greater than 10 mega ohm at that time, you will not see that much loading effect. Like in this circuit, you can see here when the load resistance is 100k, at that time you can see the current is approximately 1 ampere, the same as the idle condition. Okay. So, always whenever you buy a voltmeter at that time, you should check voltmeter resistance should be greater than 10 mega ohm. Okay. And this is the first solution. What will be the second solution? The second solution will be use the active element. What is active element? Op-amp is a active element. Okay. Now I will show you that one. You know this particular circuit, right? This one is called a voltage follower circuit or a buffer circuit. You will see this one in your syllabus, but you don't know what is the use of this one, right? You will see that this is a op amp with a negative feedback. That means we can use the virtual short. So this terminal is VI. So this terminal will be also VI. That means V0 will be equal to VI, right? That means the gain will be equal to 1. So gain is 1. Why we need to use that one, right? 
we need to use that one due to the loading effect. So how we can do that one? Just the circuit I draw there, like this is 5k, this is 5k, right? And here we have the voltage source 10 volt, right? Now at that time we connect the voltmeter here, right? So what you need to do, you don't need to connect the voltmeter in that particular one. What you need to do, just connect a op amp here. This will be plus, this is minus, right? And this will be V0. And here you connect the voltmeter. You can see here, we all know the internal resistance of op amp is how much? Infinite. That means we will not draw any current from the circuit. That means the current will be around 1 ampere. So we will get here 5 volt. Then we will get here 5 volt. Due to the virtual short, we will get 5 volt. So voltmeter will read 5 volt. And I already show you in the op amp problem that here, whatever the resistance, it will not impact the output voltage. Okay. So this is the concept of the loading effect and how to eliminate the loading effect. Okay. And for the amplifier, how to eliminate that one for the voltage source? I will show you in the next video where I will explain the voltage regulator, the use of voltage regulator and how a Zener diode acts as a voltage regulator. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks for your time. Please do share this concept with your friends. And if you like this video, please press the like button. It is really means a lot for me. Bye bye.